guys a new day and new opportunities and of course a new location and a new motorcycle it seems that it's raining cats and dogs in the form of motorcycles here especially in india the sheer power of the number of young people that india has has pushed a lot of companies to make bikes like these so this is the new super duke 1390 well i'm just joking this is the new duke 390 but doesn't it look much bigger than that and that is what ktm set out to do with the 2024 duke 390 here I'm here in this beautiful location near the Bajaj Chakan plant riding this looking at this and wondering that why is that the bigger motorcycles are getting smaller and the smaller capacity motorcycles they are getting bigger this motorcycle is primarily aimed at people who want to basically own bigger bikes later in the timeline of their lives i mean this was my first motorcycle i would just go gaga over the looks over the performance and basically the whole package that ktm has put together it's quite unbelievable this bike is majorly for young people and there is no two ways about it let me start by talking about the looks of the motorcycle so definitely from the front especially the front 3/4 the bike looks absolutely huge i mean it does not look anywhere near like a 400 cc motorcycle the shrouds here they go almost all the way down they knew that they have to make it bigger for a person to aspire probably for the super duke and they wanted to sow the seeds of that with this 390a if you recall the first baby duke which was launched in 2011 it took the entire motorcycling fraternity in india by storm it looked nothing like any other motorcycle which was available back in those days and uh, it was a radical departure in terms of looks but it was also a high performance motorcycle and then you combine the legacy of ktm and of course the weight and if the basically the whole package that still holds true till today would the duke 390 besides increasing the front mass the visual mass KTM has also put the rear suspension they have put it on the right side it is offset and that allows for many other things including a larger air box but this KTM says is done because of following the bigger duke design philosophy and that's why they have done this majorly and then you have fewer spokes in the wheels the you also have two colors that were showcased today this one the is majorly orange with an orange seat ktm means orange for most of the motorcycling world and the other color is blue uh, black and little bit of orange another big departure from the previous second gen the exhaust now it is an underbelly exhaust more visually appealing motorcycle much cleaner lines and then of course you also have the euro norms because to adhere to them the catcon and all those things you know they make the whole 
assembly much more heavier and of course a shorter um, exhaust like the one over here will help reduce the overall weight and will also give a better uh, mass centralization lower center of gravity when you sit on the motorcycle for the first time uh, visually that the shrouds are taking and going towards uh, the road it is it is unlike any other motorcycle that i've seen in this segment i mean of course it reminds me of the super duke the front over here is all has also changed you've got an all led light setup the rear is uh, not as uh, radical as the front of course because it is also very sleek tail lights could have been more radical to match the rest of the motorcycle but i'm not complaining you know it's it's not bad at all it also has lost the rear tire hugger they have actually got fins over the top of the tail assembly here and i've never seen these kind of fins and this is of course to stop the backlash and of course in rains you know so that doesn't get onto you the mud and splashes the sari guard which obviously you will remove i mean at least i do that on any new motorcycle and that will also help probably reduce 400 500 grams so according to me this version of the duke 390 is much better looking depends on what you want if you've always liked the dukes the baby dukes then this is there is no way that you're not going to like probably the mirrors could have been a little bit more uh, a little sharper and one more thing i as a designer that i would probably put is i would put some sort of a break here so that the tank and this whole shroud it gets a little bit more definition in the orange version ktm is one of the most um, modified uh, motorcycles in india in terms of at least the wraps and the looks and i'm pretty sure that this is going to delight a lot of people out there So there are key things which actually make a motorcycle, the pillars that we can say. So first is of course the looks, especially in this segment, because youth, you know, all that young energy, I mean, they want to stand out, they want to be different, they want something which is fast, nimble, agile. So that thing is sorted with the 2024 Duke 390 here. In an age where we are shifting to EVs, KTM has revamped the engine they have actually added more cc's and as you know there is no replacement for displacement so with around 26 cc's more it means that they can have a little bit more power like one and a half horsepower and two three newton meters of torque more power and the torque both arrive a little bit earlier in the new ktm 390 duke which means that it is more rideable on the road it's got a better ride uh, quality in traffic, be more um, peppier exiting the corners, especially in the mountains where you cannot carry too much of corner speed, of course, because it is not a track. You have something called the VFM, the value for money proposition, which is a function of a lot of different things, you know, the power, the electronics package and the feature set. We still have companies coming out with ICE vehicles like this, although they have a lot of electronics inside them. Now it also has launch control. I don't know where and when you will need it, but it's nice to have. It has different riding modes, of course. With the track mode, also getting a super motor mode where you can switch off the rear ABS. So the quick shifter is here, of course. It is important to talk about the Apache RTR 310 here. This is not a Comparo, but it was just launched three, four days ago. And the kind of electronics package they are offering is uh, pretty much insane, you know, and we all probably know about it already. So it's not only a war about how a motorcycle will look, the performance, but it's also about how much, how many electronics you can cram into this. One more pillar which is very important is the after sales service and the availability of spares. KTM has built that network over the last 11 12 years since it was first launched in india and one of the biggest changes that they've brought to the new duke 390 
are the front and rear suspensions now they're both adjustable which means that you if you carry a pillion if you don't if you want to have a hard ride if you're going on the track more stiffer ride you can do all those kind of things the spokes the alloys that you see are lesser than the previous generation which i think have shed around 1.5 kilograms the front disc you can see that this design enables them to actually shed a little bit more weight the bike actually turns quicker than the previous model and of course is overall lighter i haven't owned an ktm for a very long time this time i might just you now get it you know the thing with uh, bajaj is ktm is they give us a spec sheet for comparison interestingly that spec sheet does not have the triumph 400 that's like more like a roadster this one is completely like a street fighter like a hooligan I rode this in three type of places today. The first was the Bajaj test track at Chakan. Second was the roads of Pune and and then the country roads like this. And of course, little bit of off road. Now, I think the main advantage of the Tube 390 is that it's light. Other thing which I felt if you talk about track it's very precise one of the first photos that i clicked uh, you know back in 2011 was me smashing an orange with my knee on the jakan track and you know back then it caused a, quite a lot of hullabaloo on the forums the track was quite smooth i won't say super smooth and there, were, there was a parabola, there are a couple of straights, a couple of double apex, double, you know, and good enough technical track. And I really enjoyed the motorcycle. 45, 46 horsepower is not a small amount of power. You know, you can get killed on this motorcycle. You know, this is a pocket rocket, the way it accelerates. So on the track, I really enjoyed using the quick shifter. Cannot recall, truth be told, how was the second generation Duke 390 on the track? But all I can tell you that if you want to take this on the track, it's just almost ready to go. The tires are good enough. They are medzellers. Tires will also do the job on the track and on the road. So this bike is actually ready to go anywhere on the road, on the track, if you want to take it touring. It reminded me of, of course, my Iceland ride, because I actually rode 3000 kilometers on the second generation uh, Duke 390, which has to be, I think, one of the highlights out of all 66 countries that I've done on motorcycles so far. Getting the Duke over there clearly taught me that a smaller motorcycle has its advantages. Uh, when I got stuck in ice, in, in a little bit of snow, it was really easy to drag. If this was this were like a heavier motorcycle or a bigger motorcycle, I don't think I would be able to do it. Talking about long distance uh, applicability of this motorcycle. For me, I've already proved that it can be done. A lot of other people have proved in India. I mean, they've taken it to far, far more, you know, worse terrains, Leh Ladakh, and you know, you, you just named the 390 has been there. So if you want a motorcycle, which is the most powerful in this class at the best price, and one that looks like a big motorcycle, you cannot go wrong with the Duke 390. This, it's a no-brainer. Now, the big question is, when is KTM going to get their big bike lineup in India? They have been here in India for the last 12 years, almost. There is no big bike. I mean, there were, there were a few KTM RC8s. I also owned uh, one of the RC8s for two, three months in between. But I had to sell it because of the lack of availability of spares. The 790 was also like um, maybe a Diwali gift, the kind of... The, the, the numbers that they got in India, I mean, it seemed that, I don't know, they maybe just got a container or something like that. I don't know what's KTM's uh, game plan, but I know for sure that somebody wants the Super Duke, they're not going to buy this or vice versa, you know. So, in no way it's cannibalizing any other product which is made by Bajaj or KTM in India. If you want to support an Indian company, of course, you can buy the RTR 310 and that also looks the part. It's very peppy and you can watch my review separately. But if you want to support an Indian company indirectly, 
you can buy this. I mean, either way, you know, like India wins, right? This is the price that this Duke 390 for 2024 is being launched. So I think this is also a great value for money. And if somebody wants a um, really flashy motorcycle with that horsepower, this is the one to go for. Guys, I have a serious question. What is going on with the image of KTMs in India? Why do we call people chapri riders, people who ride KTMs? This is a very um, uh, difficult question to answer. It involves psychoanalysis of a rider, you know, and the fact that this motorcycle is evokes the hooligan in you. It's so much fun. They're enjoying a motorcycle. Guaranteed, you cannot wear slippers. Uh, don't ride with uh, without uh, helmet and stuff like that. Don't zigzag in traffic. But I feel, you know, we all are chapris in some way or the other. At some point of time when we are riding, what about a guy who's got a thousand a liter class motorcycle and he's doing 150 on the road, or he's got an aftermarket exhaust, he's just revving at a red light to get reaction. Let's stop labeling people like that, and you know, let's start educating. Uh, especially young riders and that is what XBHP has been doing since a very long time and I believe that we have changed a lot of people their mindset and you know just help them realize that next is after you know enjoying on the road without a helmet stuff that you get gear you ride responsibly and then you pass on that uh, wisdom to the younger riders and it's not necessarily younger riders I've seen a lot of people, you know, sometimes ride very rashly on the road. And uh, in fact, I also am a culprit, but um, I do it much lesser than what I used to do when, uh, you know, the, the culture didn't even start. I'm talking about 2001, 2002. And this is all a process, you know, that we have to go through the rite of passage. But we should ensure that now this rite of passage should be much shorter in duration because now we are all there to educate, right? So let's get over this Chapri Banti of calling other people Chapri. And let's just enjoy the ride. Let's just focus on ourselves. And until the next launch, you guys take care. And I hope you can decide what to buy.